In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Math Test 7, Section 3, No Calculator, Questions 13, 14, and 15, the last three problems before the grid ends. We know these will be the most difficult because at 16, when the grid ends begin, the difficult level will reset. Question 13, which of the following expressions is equivalent to this ratio? I think you might be, students might be inclined to try to factor this out, but 3, we can't get a factor of 3 into 5, right? 3 times 2 is 6, it's not going to work, so we have to use long division. We saw this, I think, on a previous test, so we have to divide x minus 3 into x squared minus 2x minus 5. The first step when we're using long division is just pay attention to the x's, not the constant. We want to cancel out this x squared, so we know that x times x is x squared. So we have to multiply this whole quantity by x, we get x squared minus 3x. Another concept, just to keep in mind, when you're using long division, we always subtract. x squared minus x squared is 0. That's what we want. It cancels out. Negative 2x minus negative 3x, this is going to be plus 3x, so we end up with just a positive x. This one's a little bit easier because we have an x. We need an x, so we're just going to multiply by 1 here. And we bring this, this 5 down here. And we multiply by 1, and we get x minus 3. Again, we always subtract. x minus x is 0. Negative 5 minus negative 3, we get negative 2. And that's, we're, we're done. So this is the factor. And this last part, this negative 2, is the remainder. And so it's going to be minus 2 over what we divided by originally, x minus 3. And you just keep doing this until you don't have the x's. You just have a constant. And that last part will be the remainder. It's that value over what you divided by. And the answer is D. Sometimes there might just be one step. This one had two, but you just keep doing it until you the X's are gone. And then the last step is the remainder. All right, let's take a look at question number 14. A shipping service restricts the dimensions of the boxes it will ship for a certain type of service. The restriction states that for boxes shaped like rectangular prisms, the sum of the perimeter of the base of the box and the height of the box cannot exceed 130 inches. The perimeter of the base is determined using the width and length of the box. If a box has a height of 60 inches and its length is 2.5 times the width, which inequality shows the allowable width, x, and inches of the box? All right, we're told this is a prism, a rectangular prism. A prism just means a three-dimensional shape that has two equal bases. So it could be a cylinder, for example. Two equal bases, that's a prism. In this case, we have a rectangular prism. And so we have looks something like this. And so again, we've got two equal bases. And we know that it cannot exceed the, the perimeter of the base of the box and the height. So the base and the height cannot exceed 130. And so cannot exceed means less than or equal to. So this is the first part, less than or equal. Now we already have the height is 60. So that's one part of the perimeter. But then we just have to get the base of the box. We're not given the inches, but we are given this condition that the length is two and a half times the width. And so think about the length equals 2.5 the width. We can use substitution here. We don't want an L and a W. We can just express both in terms of W. And so for length, we're going to put 2.5 W. So think about the base of the box is just a, a rectangle. And we've got two widths. But instead of length, we're going to substitute 2.5 w, 2.5 w. And so we just add up the w's, and we get 2.5 plus 2.5 is 5, 6, 7, we get 7 w. So it's 7 w plus the 60. This is the inches of the height is less than or equal to 130. We subtract 60 from both sides. We get 7 w is less than or equal to 70. So we know that w has to be less than or equal to 10 inches. And if you look at the choices, here it is. x is the inches. We know the width has to be less than or equal to 10. Obviously, it has to be greater than 0 because this is a real life problem. It can't be negative. This is the answer here. It's a. All right, last question before the grid ends, number 15. The expression can be written as this where k is a positive constant, what's the value of k? All right, and so let's think about this here 
is the difference of perfect squares. All right, whenever you see two equal parts with a subtraction, right, it could be x minus 8, x plus 8. We know that's the difference, the factor difference of two perfect squares, and the middle terms will cancel out because this is going to be x squared minus 64, right? We get a minus 8x plus 8x, those will cancel out. This is the difference of perfect squares. And so let's think about multiplying this out. We get x squared, the middle terms will cancel out because we get plus kx minus kx, but then we get minus k squared. So I think that's the first step. And then we're going to multiply this whole quantity by one third. And we want to get this equation, which is one third x squared minus two. So we're pretty close right now. The key, I think, for this one, if you multiply one third times x squared, we already have this. But this is minus two by itself. And we need to get one third times that to get minus two. And so I would just think about what quantity times one third equals negative two. Just think about this whole quantity. What does this have to be? So when you multiply it by a negative one third or by one third, you get negative two. The answer is six, right? So just think about it. If we were to rewrite this as one third x squared minus 6, right? Do you see now we get the 1 third x squared and we get minus 2 when we distribute it. And so what that I think is the key is recognizing that k squared, right? Here's the negative. So I'm just dealing with the k squared has to equal 6. And then we just solve, we just square root both sides. So k equals the square root of 6. I think it's kind of a tricky question. If you're not certain, you don't see that, I would plug in values, plug this in. Um, but I would first multiply it out like this. And you could see if this is the square root of 6, and then we square it, it becomes 6. And then negative 6 times 1 third is negative 2, which we want. And so a little bit of a tricky problem. Just be careful on those. You can plug in answers. The answer is D.